I have to go back to all politics is local. No matter what we say, intellectually, we might need a global government. We will not get it because all politics is local. So what we need is uh, what I would call a macroscope. Um, the microscope is invented to see small things, the telescope to see things far away. The macroscope is not invented yet, but it should be an instrument that help us see the big picture and see our role in the big picture, see that small actions matter in the big picture. This is the macroscope and this is what data could really think of itself as a macroscope that helps people see their own role in things to help them see the big picture, see how their small actions play into the bigger scheme of things. We took, um, we took a lot of uh, weather data in Denmark already, um, I think five or maybe 10 years ago, it was in my time as minister, we used all the weather data uh, in, in different ways. So I'm going to give you two examples that turns this uh, global data into local data. One is what I would call technocratic, which makes people's lives better, but they don't notice it. The other one is, I would say, democratic, uh, so that people could actually see and participate in using that data for, for uh, making solutions. So the technocratic one is actually that we use weather data in Denmark for controlling our sewage systems. So if we know that the rain is going to fall in the northern part of the city of Copenhagen, we can actually direct the water away to the southern part of the sewage system so that it's clear and empty for a big rainfall. This means we do not have to pick as big sewers and they're very expensive. All of you know this infrastructure to handle the new climate is very expensive. So we can actually use the existing infrastructure as storage because we get the weather data and the warnings and we can then um, uh, be prepared for rainfalls and use that. That's very technocratic. It's happening under the ground. People don't notice it. The only thing they see is that their bills for handling wastewater does not go up and that, that will make them happy too. The other one, which is more democratic, is that we actually took, uh, we made a height model in Denmark where we had the, measured all heights in the, in the country and we know exactly how floodings will happen when the water comes. We've modeled it, we have the scenarios. And we have then also made these blue spot maps where you can see where which parts of the country are really exposed to climate change, to floodings, to groundwaters rising and to big storms. And when we gave that out free, it put a big pressure on the municipalities and the local governments because suddenly people who thought, oh, my house is placed right in a blue spot. I need to get my uh, local government to act to, to be ready for climate change. How can we change this dialogue? We don't need a stand to tell us what data is available. You know what data is available. You've heard today. I think this conversation has alerted us to the fact that we're missing a trick, aren't we? In the discussions around Paris, the national determined targets, the issue of enhanced, um, you know, uh, transparency and being able to understand what's going on in locality. We've heard from Ida, Ida that actually you could really go down even further, but it's how you use the information to create citizen advocacy, citizen engagement, but ultimately, um, in, you know, really fire the imagination of people, they can do something. But also, going back to your point about peer pressure, because they'll know that actually on my street, this is what's happening as opposed to another neighborhood. And therefore, you give rise to civic and civil uh, engagement in terms of political behavior. The central idea of what we're doing globally as an international community in climate change is that trust is the basis of cooperation. And this is a, a tremendous decade ahead of all of us as humanity to build a bright future. And it centers on trust. So a key question that I'm coming and hoping to learn today, and, and maybe all of you too, is how can Earth Observation um, and other technologies build trust and help us actually see that future that we're going to build together? That's for me the main idea and the main question. People are making use of space data and the fact that politicians should be making more and better use of it. And I hope, you know, I get your point, Coco, but the, the fact is, we know human nature and adversity seems to drive action rather than prevention. And that's the issue here, that as we know, this year alone, most of us are witnessing four seasons in a day. And we think, ah, that's just bad weather. And we're not really getting a grip about what is actually happening to our environment. And, you know, I think it's the issue is that those who are, those
those of our communities who are on the vulnerable edges, whether it's the island communities or the poorest or those in the poorest built social housing in inner cities, um, are going to suffer the brunt of this if we don't take action now.